Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Pixie Love. You guys can call me Pixie. And today we're doing some r slash fat logic. I know, it's been a week. I'm sorry. I actually had a video recorded for Monday and the audio was shit. <laughs> Maybe I'll post it one day so you guys can just hear it and you know, let me know. Um, it was um, me and Kyla, my niece, my last video reacted to a fresh and fit podcast and oh my god I'm definitely gonna do them again because that was a whole freaking topic that I need to get on but two so the audio was playing from my speaker and the desktop so it's like double audio so it's a little annoying but if you guys are interested in that it was like a whole 40 minute uh like I think a 50 or an hour recording session so it'll be a long ass video for you guys let me know down below if you guys do want to see that because I will post it for you if you want to deal with all that mess. Anyway, let's get into these crazy entitled fat people who think the world revolves around them. I was fat in college. I'm fat now. In the time between, I spent many years weight suppressing and struggling with an eating disorder. When I started to heal from my eating disorder, my body went back to pretty much the same size I was before. We spend so many years fighting for our bodies when our bodies know all along just where they need to be. I imagine when my body settled back at this size, it let out a deep breath and got cozy and was so happy to be where it belongs. I don't want to say when you stop dieting because in your words you were saying you had an, eat, an eating disorder and who am I to say if you had an eating disorder or not? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But when you stop fully restricting yourself and eating a certain way you went back to eating the way you did and you gained the weight back that's not your body being at that size that's just you going back to those bad eating habits and your body going back to that weight your body protects your weight range with the same favor that protects your body temperature if it sense weight has been lost it sets a oh my god if it sense that weight has been lost it sets a slew of psychological reactions to restore your weight q thinking about food all the time being driven to high cal calorie food like i see where you're coming from i see what you're saying but if you are trying to lose weight and you're thinking about food all the time and stuff like that Maybe it's because you have a food addiction. Maybe it's because the way your body reacts to the unhealthy, high processed foods that you're eating is the way that they know your body's gonna react to. Like, these fast foods, restaurants, the food industry, they know that the food and the chemicals and stuff that they put into the food is very addicting. And when you try to eat more natural, better foods for you, it's kind of hard because it's like weaning yourself off a fucking drug. And your body reacts accordingly. You're like thinking about your drug. You get dopamines from these foods and now your body's not getting these dopamines and it's just not good. And you have to retrain your brain. Body temperature is completely different. I don't know the whole science behind body temperature, but I do know a little bit what I'm talking about with the weight thing, okay? Okay. No shit, the weight loss industry slash weight loss focused physician doesn't want anyone glorifying obesity. If word got around that fatness is nothing to be afraid of and that there are fat people everywhere living glor glorious lives, they would be out of a job. Don't let them fool you. That is about anyone's well-being except their bank accounts. Okay. Let's talk about it. Because this one kind of annoys me a little bit because it's fucking stupid. They talk so much of how, oh, the diet industry and doctors are such a big business. And that's why they don't want people to lose weight. Or that's why they want people to lose weight and blah, blah, blah. First of all, I'm pretty sure doctors and like physicians make more money off of you being fat because you probably have more health issues and have to go see them more on a regular basis. Um, second of all, it doesn't really cost anything to lose weight. Like you literally just have to eat less food. Anyway, but you guys always preach and yell about this industry is toxic and they only care about their money. But yet you feed into the food industry and I want to do 
a video on all like the things that the food industry does to keep you hooked on foods and stuff like that because stuff like that is so interesting like did you know that McDonald's sorry my keyboard did you know that McDonald's has their own special recipe for Sprite and that's why McDonald's Sprite hits different like it's a meme for a fucking reason so McDonald's Sprite from what I know has like a higher sugar intake than any other Sprite and that's why people are more addicted to the McDonald's Sprite and that's why it tastes different because it fucking is different and those are the little things that like companies like McDonald's do to keep you coming I'm also pretty sure they put a little sugar in their french fries like sugar and salt I don't know why there's something that they fucking do to those fries to make them fucking addicting. I personally am not a huge fry person anyway. I mean, I'm not hooked on McDonald's fries, but like McDonald's fries are fucking good. But like, I'm sh I'm sure there's something they do to their fucking fries too. And it's not just McDonald's that does shit like that. All the food industries does things that get you hooked on the food or their marketing. Let's talk about fucking food marketing, bro. The way that they market their food are like, oh, family friendly and like cereal is supposed to be extremely healthy for children and it's like loaded up on sugar. Are you kidding me? But let's not talk about those industries, the ones that you're actually feeding into. Let's talk about the ones you want nothing to do with. Like, okay, let's, let's stay away from these guys, but you know... No, you, 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 no, nah. It's just, you, you can't talk about the big bad industries when you're feeding into a big bad industry at the same time. They're both bad. I don't really think weight loss focused physicians, besides like actual like doctors that do like bariatric surgeries, like I don't really, I think most physicians are just in the business of making people healthy, but you know, whatever. You guys don't like the word health and Fat people living their life. You act like... <laughs> See, this is so patronizing because you feel like these industries think that human beings... Or, you know, you just alone think that us people don't know that fat people live their lives. Like, we don't just think... I'm oh, sorry, I am fat, by the way, if you're new here. People don't just think that fat people just don't live their lives. Like, they're miserable and they don't do anything. They don't have any fun. Like, no one sits here and thinks that. We, like... What? Like, I have, <laughs> I've never just been, like, seeing someone way fatter than me. Like, mm, they're probably, like, not existing. Their their life is definitely not glorious or anything. Like, mm, only skinny people have these amazing, glorious lives. And I want to be just, like, a skinny person. You know, all it shows is just how you guys think about people. So, literally it. You're delusional. And it's fucking weird. Hey, if you guys are interested in what I look like and seeing my day-to-day -day and seeing my body journey, I do post a lot more full body pictures and everything on my Instagram. Follow me on my Instagram, okay? All right, I, ha I will say I have been slimming down a little bit. You guys can see, see what I look like. I'm pretty cute, okay? I mean, I've been told that I am cute, so you guys should follow me on Instagram. Instagram is the same as my name, pixielove5642, okay? Today's reminder, you are not morally superior because you worked out today or ate your vegetables. Once again, no one thinks that they're morally superior for eating vegetables or working out. You just think if someone takes pride in going to the gym or working out or taking care of themselves, you assume that that person thinks that they are better than you, which means you think that that person thinks that they're better than you. Not the other way around. Just because you perceive someone a certain way doesn't make that true. Sorry, not motherfucking sorry. Just because you, and if someone is proud of themselves from going to the gym, proud of the hard work that they put into their bodies, proud of themselves for eating vegetables, that has nothing to do with how they feel about someone else who doesn't do those things. Okay, like, I take great pride that I don't do drugs or anything, really. I don't smoke weed, really. I don't, like, drink, really. I don't, like, do things like that. But do I think someone who drinks or smokes some fucking weed is... You know not as superior as me no most of my fucking family smokes weed my best friend smokes weed okay she just got a new bong for her 420 deal okay like I don't think and ever since from a young age like a lot of people I hang out with are potheads and I hang out with them while they're fucking smoking because that's what most of my friends do and I just don't smoke do I just sit in that room like I'm so superior <laughs> I don't smoke and I'm better. Like, no. Just because I don't do something that they do doesn't mean I feel like I'm superior to them. And no one thinks that I think I'm superior. So, 
you're just weird. Once again, it's it's just weird. What eating disorders with PCOS can look like. Cutting out entire food groups. Avoiding events with food. Calorie counting. Exercise to make up for food. Weighing daily. Vowing to start on Monday. Okay, so P someone had a conversation down in my comments about how like, um, it was another post similar to this and it was like, oh, disordered eating and eating disorders or, or like dieting and eating disorders I think it was and how it was like the same things but one basically is you're in control and the other one is when you're not in control until a point and even if an eating disorder can start off as a diet once it gets into a territory of an eating disorder then it's no longer something you can really control it's like your brain has taken over and it has a mind of its own and it's way more than just wanting to lose weight at that point it has morphed into something else and this is very similar these things can all be a symptom of an eating disorder but it doesn't mean it is a eating disorder if someone wants to cut out entire food groups if they're not hurting anyone let them that's like saying like vegans and vegetarians cut out entire food groups. Is that an eating disorder? Are all vegetarians and vegans eating disorder now? Like, I mean, like, okay. Avoiding events with food. Why is that a problem? That actually would probably be a really good thing for someone where especially when food is someone's love language and like they relate love with emotions and food like someone like me because I have to learn to enjoy the people around me and spend time with the people around me without having to involve food. Because a lot of the times when I want to do things with my boyfriend, I want to be play with squat teeth. For me, that's just love. And I have to learn to express my love with them or with people I care about without food. And so probably avoiding events with food is a good way for me to not associate food with happiness, love, family, and stuff like that. Because that's a lot of where my family events are around, food. Counting calories. There's nothing wrong with counting calories. You can count calories to lose weight. You can count calories to maintain your weight. You can count calories to lose your weight. There's nothing wrong with knowing the amount of energy that's going into your body. Let's say you're one, you're maintaining your weight, right? And you know that you're going to be up on your feet, working out, you know, doing an excess amount of work that day, right? If you were counting your calories, you would know, like, hey, maybe I want to eat a little bit more today so I'm not, you know losing calories or something I don't fucking know you know using exercise for makeup for food if you want to make an excuse to exercise make an excuse to exercise it's not going to kill anyone to fucking exercise okay weighing yourself daily once again if it's not obsessive it's fine there are times where I can weigh myself every day and it doesn't affect me I'm just looking at the number on the scale but there are also times where I know if I'm weighing myself daily and I'm getting obsessed with that number and the number is affecting me emotionally, I know I need to step back and not weigh myself. I don't let it get to a point where it's obsessive. And that's where you have to understand how your brain works and what works for you. If you can catch yourself seeing it become a problem, that's when you know you need to step back. Maybe take the batteries out of your scale, you know what I mean? Maybe hide it away where you don't see it every day. And vowing to start on Monday, that... Doesn't seem like an eating disorder to me. That seems like me. Who's <laughs> like, I'm gonna start again on Monday. You know, we're gonna try again. We messed it up. It's okay. Um, no. <laughs> but like, yeah, um, I don't I don't know. I think I spent way too much time on this post. Let's move on for a couple more. Because I am limiting myself today. <laughs> Medical abuse is real. How many of these Fat related diseases are just diseases allowed to progress undetected because of fat phobia. So you're saying that there are diseases that doctors are saying, you know, are caused to be worse when you're fat. That doctors are blatantly ignoring on skinny people just to be fat phobic? That is fuck- okay. That is so fucking delusional. That is f do, like, do you understand the type of consp- uh, you know what type of ex conspiracy all doctors and physicians would have to be going through to blatantly ignore people's issues just to be fucking fat phobic? Like I, I said in the beginning of the video, 
fucking fat people thinking that the world revolves around them and this is someone who thinks the fucking world revolves around them and everyone is thinking about your fat ass all the fucking time let me break something straight to you because i know you're not watching this but i'm gonna break it straight to whoever is watching this no one cares about you that fucking much there is not a whole world conspiracy to sit there and make fat people seem that fucking bad calm the fuck down i'm sorry that's just ridiculous i don't understand like what is i i'm just trying to think their logic like they're you know they say that skinny people are healthy and everything why would doctors if you know they held skinny people to be at such a good standard and the good thing why would we they want to purposely not diagnose skinny people with diseases they wouldn't they want their golden child to like live in their way like i don't get it i don't understand like you're maybe I'm reading this wrong maybe they're saying that there's they're they're not detecting diseases in fat people because of fat phobia but the way that this is said it's like fat related diseases are that are allowed to progress undetected because of fat phobia which the way I'm reading that sentence is you're saying that there are diseases related to fat people that other people have but they're just not detecting it because the person's not fat that is personally how i'm reading it and to me that is fucking delusional if i am reading it wrong please let me know down in the comments but i'm just i can't all right before i read this one i'm gonna say trigger warning extreme entitlement ahead because i'm already fucking triggered so i'm giving this is a warning for myself but it's too late anyway if healthcare workers are being injured caring for fat patients that are that is also a training and equipment issue. Fat people are deserving of health care. It's not our fault your work conditions are unsafe. It's not my fault that I'm 700 pounds and you need eight people to fucking lift me into a bed because I'm too fucking fat to get into a bed myself. That's not my fucking fault. I'm sorry. When I was reading this, all I was thinking of all the episodes that I watched of like my 600 pound life and how like when they need to be transported, they have to have like the fire fucking men come and transport them into a fucking bed because they're too fucking fat to get into a fucking bed. And then this whole time they're fucking whining and complaining because they can't fucking fit this giant ass bed through their tiny ass fucking door and the God forbid the edge of the door is touched their fucking skin. Sorry, my voice cracked. But like, I am so pissed. Like, yes, five people deserve hospital care but the hospital has to try to pro cater to the majority of people okay and they are patriotic hospital am i saying the wrong i'm saying the word wrong but they're not patriotic but patriotic there are hospitals that are designed for bigger patients and i don't even think we need more of those there should there shouldn't be a thing like, that's already ridiculous. But there are hospitals to cater to your type of people. But sometimes you have to go out of the normal for it. Just like... <sighs> just like if you live in like a rural city or a rural area to get to like a hospital, sometimes you have to like go farther because there's more people where there's going to be better equipment. Like, like it's just... If you're that big, live near a fucking hospital made for fat people. But, like, I... <laughs> but, like, that's what I'm... Like, I hope... I, if you're... <clears throat> I'm, like, stuttering over here. But like, that's exactly what I thought while reading this was my 600 pound life and how big these patients are and just how much it takes to lift someone up and how it can actually hurt somebody because it's not... They're, a human person should not be lugging around... 700 pounds and now another person has to lug around someone who's fucking 700 pounds. It's ridiculous. Okay? And if you as a fat person are to the point where you need someone else to take care of you like that, maybe you should do something about it. Like, wouldn't you... Okay, even if you had a disease that was not curable, it's human nature to want to try to do something to save that. Like, Let's say you have cancer. It's like human nature to even if like all the odds are failed and there's no medical medicine that they can give you to help you. Human nature is to seek out other alternatives. 
you know, go to a witch doctor, go find some herbs, like, get, like, there's always, not always, but there's, like, typically human nature to want to find a way to help this. So, if you are in a situation as a fat person, and you're an enormous amount of weight, like, 600 pounds, and you wind yourself up in the hospital, human nature would want to help you get out of that situation and being sick. It would be human nature to want to try to do something. And if something that you could do, whether it's going to help or not, would if it was a possibility that losing weight would help you, why would you not want to do that? It's fucking human nature. I don't get it. All right, that last one had me just a little heated. You know, I'm not going to let it get to me. They don't deserve my energy, but I'm giving it to them. But like the entitlements in some of these posts are just baffling it's so baffling how entitled people can be but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did make sure you guys leave a like down below if you guys enjoyed me make sure you guys subscribe because i'm trying to start giving you guys videos more often all my social medias are up on the top instagram is the one i use the most and let me tell you i'm darn cute so you guys should follow me on there and i'll see you guys later bye bye